States, the Yakima Valley produces three quarters of all the hops grown in America. It's a part of beer culture. Folks don't often get a chance to see up close, which is exactly the view we're going to get today. Hey, hey Michael. Hey. That's great. Oh. Hey, been a long time. Yeah, what? CBC? Yeah, Denver. Yeah, all right. Uh, <laughs> CBC is the Craft Brewers Conference. That's where all the brewing industry gets together once a year. And this is Doug McKinnon. He's the owner of 47 Hops Company and a hop merchant. Yeah, yeah. we buy hops from growers all over the Yakima Valley and all over the world, in fact. And uh, we you know, bring them here, store them in our warehousing, pellet them. Uh, and then we sell them to brewers. A lot of people don't know what it takes to process the hops before they get to the brewer. Can you take us through that? Oh, yeah, sure. I've got a bunch of friends who are hop growers. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of work. We can go take a look at a farm. Hey, let's do it. Yeah, let's go. Doug, how you doing? Good, good, to, see good to see you again. I want to introduce you to Michael Ferguson. Michael, nice to meet you. Michael, this is Graham Gamash. Graham owns uh, Cornerstone Ranch. Yeah. Welcome to my farm. We have about 500 acres of hops. And I'm fourth generation. It's been passed fourth down generation. year after year. Thanks for having us. Oh, uh, my pleasure. This is pretty cool. So we're picking Citra today. This is a standard way of picking. This is a top cutter. Nice. That, wow. So it just goes along the top where the... Uh, hops are suspended from when they grow up yeah and it just pulls it right off there's two people on the side of the truck they're threading the vines in and then he's just filling the truck back in the old days didn't they have to go along with these top knives and slice them on the way down not only that but then they would make piles on the ground yeah. and then people would cluster around and pick hops by hand yeah. wow <laughs> nowadays we truck these into a picking facility so michael this is where the trucks come from the field and where the vines are unloaded. I've got right. three vine unloading bays, and these fellas, they put the vines on the hooks, and the hooks come up, they're staged right here above us, and then they go inside the picking machine, and that's where all the action happens. Wow, this is pretty amazing. Watch your head. Oh, yeah. Everything that's coming off the vines while they're being stripped is going onto that belt. As you can see, the hops are being dropped up here onto a set of recleaners. Right. Recleaners are basically fans. So the light material, like the leaves, gets sucked up against the mesh, and then when it goes around the back side, it blows out. Ingenious. And then the hops and the remaining material land on these dribbles. The idea of a dribble is that the hops roll down, and see them rolling? Yep. And the leaves and foreign material, or stems, come moving forward. So the hops that come off of here go straight into the kilns. Whatever comes forward, which is still more hops, but also leaves and stems, it's dropped on what's called a fontaine. So, Michael, this is the fontaine. Oh, yeah. yeah it's a series of drums with picking fingers on it. And you can oh, yeah. see it being dropped on the drum, and it just goes round and round. And the fingers, they just pick it. This truly does look like a Rube Goldberg device. It's actually, it looks kind of rough, but it's uh, very gentle. <laughs> After this, then what? The hops, they go actually onto another set of dribbles just for one more removal process. And then they fall onto the final belt. I like to call it the money belt. Oh, I can see oh, why. Yeah. I mean, look at that. That is beautiful. Green to get to green. That's just gorgeous. Nice, big, beautiful yeah. citra hops. Take wow. a look at that. Oh, see the man. lupulin oh, in there? That. That's the pollen that has all the good stuff that goes into the flavor of the beer. Oh, That's just gorgeous. Now this belt goes into the kilns where they're dry and conditioned. Once the bed is laid, we'll turn the fan on in the burner and get the drying process started. So this bed's been drying for about eight hours. Uh, you can feel the hot temperature. It's 135 degrees. There's a room down below, like a basement, where all this air is coming in. So the hot air rises up through there. So how much longer do they have here? Probably about two more hours. Next, we bail it. Hey, Michael, this is where we make the bales. He's sewing it right there. Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah they have to sew it while it's still compressed. There's 200 pounds of hops in there. When the pledger releases, it's the actual bale cloth that's holding the bale. Whoa! Right. I use a lot of uh, whole hops, uh -huh. but mostly what I use is pelletized okay. hops. And where is that done? We receive bales from Graham and other growers, and then we pellet however many hops we need to pellet to satisfy our brewer customers. So uh, I happen to have a friend who has a pellet mill on his farm. We could go over there and check it out. All right, like Graham. Oh man, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. No, no, the pleasure's been mine. This is cool. exciting. It's it's nice to be behind the scenes on yeah. something that's so important to brewing. Oh, it was nice to have you. Thanks again. All right. So this is the guy I was telling you about. Hey, oh, how's it going? Yeah, how are you Good to see you, man. Michael, how are you? Long yeah. time no see. How are you doing? Good. Welcome uh, to the you guys didn't know each other. Uh, we've been in the industry a long time. This is Jim Boyd. He's 
big wig here at uh, Roy Farms. What do you do here? I'm in charge of quality control on the pellet line, and I'm also the vice president of sales and marketing for hop sales at Roy Farms. Probably between now and the end of harvest, we'll have somewhere between five and seven million pounds of hops through here in process before harvest is over. Wow. When they're not pelleting their own hops during harvest, they're pelleting baled hops for other people like 47 hops. We right. bring all our baled hops here to get them pelleted. Why don't you take us through the process of pelletizing? Okay. Getting the right bulk density on the pellet is very important. And that happens up here in the hammer mill. Instead of pulverizing it into really fine dust, we make a relatively large particle size. It's larger than most people would do, but what that allows us to do is to bring product through the dye at the pellet line, exuding it through a round dye with a lot of small holes okay. in it with reduced temperatures. If too hot, too long, we're going to flash off the volatiles, which are the important things right. the growers are looking for. The oils, the aromas, and the flavors. All the volatile components that you need in your brew kettle, we're preserving them right here. We uh, draw a vacuum, which evacuates the oxygen. Oxygen is bad for hop storage. Oh, yeah. They take the shot, they put them on a pallet, and we move them next door into cold storage. And that's all in 36 to 48 hours from the field, ready to go to your brew kettle. That is, that's impressive. That's amazing. I got to thank you so much, Jim. I'm glad you stopped by his hand. Did he make good beer? Thank Another you. big guy in the industry. <laughs> Two big players in the beer industry. Let's go make some beer. All right.